In this demo video, I would like to go over the basics of using uh, the dimension functions in AutoCAD. So those are going to be found on the Annotate tab, just to the right of the text information that we've been dealing with. So like I mentioned in a previous video, you will be able to find some of this on the Home tab, about in the middle, where the annotation panel is. But I feel like it's really good to to go to the annotation tab and take a look at it here. It's a little bit more um, intuitive, I think, to work in it this way. So with dimensions, you have the option to use standard or annotative, just like you do with the text. Okay, so it's really the same type of thing with dimensioning. So you can either do standard, where you have to say, how tall the letters are really in proportion to the model like 9 inches tall or 18 inches tall or something like that or you can do annotative like we see up here where really then you're concerned about the print text height so I might say 3 30 seconds of an inch or a quarter inch and that will flex and change based on, based on the scale of my drawing so that's really the difference there and I covered that in the previous two videos so right now I'm just going to go over really how dimensioning itself works and setting up a dimension style to do that you do the same basic thing by going to the dimensioning panel here and click on this dimension style button and that brings up the dimension style manager so as I just said, we have the options for standard or annotative. And in this particular situation, I'm just going to pick standard to keep it really simple. So we have the standard option here. And what I'm going to do is say new. Okay, I don't want to modify the existing standard options. I just want to start out with a new one. When I say new, it will say copy one, two, or three of standard and so on. but I'll give it a name, something like that. Now see that you can also say, do I want to start out with a different one? So you have an option to change it right there. And right now I could make it annotative or leave it not. So these are very, very flexible options. I'm not gonna make this one annotative and I'll just say continue. Once I do, I get into this whole menu here and it's a lot more complex than the text style manager, but it's really about the same thing. The difference is that with dimensions, you can change so many aspects of, of how it looks, the style, the way it reacts in different situations. So uh, don't get overwhelmed. The first and most important thing that you're going to want to look into are the primary units. So across the top, we have a variety of tabs, lines, symbols and arrows, text fit, primary units, alternate units, and tolerances. So we want the one that's kind of in the middle primary units. This is going to affect your dimensions more than anything else. So right here it says decimal. I happen to be working in architectural units so that's the one that I want to pick, architectural. And you see when you do that this preview here changes. So I went from having decimal units to architectural. Below that you have precision and this will affect you, you know, depending if you're doing something very small and intricate or large and schematic. So if I click on that, you'll see that I could do it so it's only inches or that I could be, you know, um, precise to a half inch, a quarter, an eighth. So that's something you'll have to make a decision on. And this is going to depend on how precise you need to be. I would recommend making this only as precise as you need to be. So, for example, I don't want to take it all the way to the bottom if I'm doing a big floor plan because if you do and you're just a little bit off with your clicking, it can make kind of a mess. So I might leave it at 1 16th, even though I don't think I'll even need that. You can pick things like your fraction format. Are they horizontal? Are they diagonal? Uh, you know, that type of thing, not stacked at all. And that's just going to be a personal preference. I might just say diagonal this time. And we can choose how much it rounds off and all that type of thing. Uh, but really on this particular page right now, just for the basics, I'm just going to change the primary units to architectural and maybe just make a few tweaks under precision and that type of thing. Then what I'm going to go to is text. Text is very important. So here under text style, the first option, I could actually pick a text style that I've already used. So I could say standard nine here, for example, and that would go to the standard nine format that I worked on in a previous 
video. And then if I do that, it's really just kind of good to go. But if I don't want that, I could just change it back to, you know, the generic textile or something and kind of work on it in here. Uh, we also have the option to change the text and the fill color. And mine is just by block, which means it will be whatever color the the layer is. You know, I could change it or by layer there, yes. So, you know, that's fine. Uh, the important thing to me right here is text height. So mine happens to say nine inches right there. And that means that if I print at an eighth inch scale, it will be three thirty seconds of an inch tall. If I want it larger or smaller, I could just come in here and say, oh, I would like that to be four and a half inches, for example. And you'll see that in my preview, it shrunk quite a bit. So maybe I'll just leave that at nine for now and see how that looks on my particular floor plan. The fraction height we can also change. So it's at one right now, but I could make that 0.5. And you'll see in the preview, now the fraction is a lot smaller and takes up a lot less space. That can be nice. We can also do things like changing the placement of the text, whether it's vertical, left, right, centered, and so on. There's a lot of different options here. Other than text, we also have symbols and arrows, and these are the other types of things you're going to want to change. So first and foremost, do you want arrows? Do you want architectural ticks, circles, dots? boxes, whatever it might be. You get to pick that here. So I might want to do an architectural tick instead of an arrow. Uh, but if I have a leader, for example, I might let that be a little arrow. The arrow size is very important. Notice that in my preview, I can't really see it. That's just because it's really small. It's still there. If you want to arrow up and down to change the size, you can certainly do that. But I think you can see that it's going to take me forever for that to get any bigger. I'm still not even at an inch. So I'm just going to highlight that. And if I change it to nine and click outside of it, that's looking a little big, right? So I might take that down to, you know, four inches or something. And you can kind of, you know, change what you think about that. One of the last really key things I think is worth playing around with when you first make your own dimension style is the offset from origin. And this is going to vary depending on the size of the, you know, the object that you're drawing. So if it's a small part, you want this closer. If it's a large floor plan, for example, farther away. Uh, but this is really how close the dimension lines are getting to your object. So the larger this number, the farther away it is. And you can probably just barely see it um, up here, but now that's getting pretty far away. And you can see it's about a foot away. Um, I might want to do something like four inches, for example, just to make it a little more reasonable. And, you know, you might end up coming in and changing this, but I think that looks okay. So I'll say, okay, down here. And then what I want to do is set current. So it's my current dimension style and close. So now what I'll do is just simply grab a dimension up there and test it out. When you're putting in dimensions, it's really important to have on object snap down at the bottom of your screen and ortho, at least when we're doing this type of thing to really keep it neat. So over here on the left of the dimension panel, I have a variety of options, but what we're doing is really simple. We're going to do just this basic linear dimension, or you could potentially use aligned, you know, for what we're doing here, it, it wouldn't make much of a difference. So I'll choose linear and then I'll just do a simple one snap from each end point and then pull my mouse out. When I do that, I can just arbitrarily click and that's where it will land. So here you can see how my style settings have uh, really come, come together. So my um, architectural tick line is about four inches. And I can see that my four inch gap is really about the same size. And then my text, my 18 feet, 10 inches is about nine inches. Okay. That looks pretty good, but I could always go in and go to my textile manager and modify it and make some changes. So I could say maybe I want my text to actually be four and a half inches tall. Maybe I would like my architectural ticks to be three inches and maybe my offset from origin I would like to do at two just to make some modifications. I'll say okay, set current and close. And because I had that, you know, all highlighted and ready to go, we had 
our changes take place. So the text, the ticks, the space all got smaller. So you can see how easy it is to go in and change those and get them to work for what you want. I'm just going to delete this one and do another. If I do my linear dimension from corner to corner again, and see when I pull the mouse out, I do have the option to, for example, type in the distance. So I could say that I want this dimension line to be out 24 inches, and now it's out 24 inches from this corner point to here. So that's a nice way of getting things to line up exactly how you want. I could come off to the side here again and do from this corner to this corner and out 24 inches and now they look you know pretty good. If you want to do several things in a row you have a few options you know let's say I wanted to dimension something down here I can do linear go let's say corner to this end point and out and then if I pick it again I can go from you know this point to this point and snap it here repeat and do the process that way to line them up nicely and there is nothing wrong with that okay and then I can snap here to get them lined up but actually look at that it's not lined up very well I have this tick and this tip kind of piling on top of each other and it looks bad okay we don't like that but what I can do is actually use one of the more sophisticated dimensioning tools here and that would be the continue button so if I wanted to do you know many in a row I can do my basic dimension here, go corner to corner, and get my first one how I like it. Then I can do continue, and that will just pick up right where I left off and allow me to go from here, and I could even come in and with object snap tracking on, I'll turn that on at the bottom of the screen, even start getting interior items if I wanted to do something like that. And I can just keep going. And that's a much, much faster way to do it. I could also put in an overall dimension on the outside. And I could just keep going that way. You can also get all of your dimensions in and then after the fact use something like adjust space to adjust the space between your dimensions um, so you're never really stuck. Likewise, I can go in and even do you know, stretching items if I wanted to for example, move the text or something like that. So they're all, you know, you're able to modify them um, very easily after. So don't let using, you know, these basic dimensions stress you out too much. The most important thing is set yourself up a dimension style that's going to work for you. Don't adjust the one that already comes with CAD, but create a new one. And then within that, you can simply modify it using all of these different options here and really make it your own. Once you get your basic dimensions down, you'll see that you can use things like continue, we can adjust the size, you can add break lines and all those types of things to get something more sophisticated. But what we've covered here is really the basics of how a standard dimension works.